Well, a research project is a project. And here to talk about project management is Kim Toussaint, who has been a uh, research manager and uh, academic program manager at Ohio State for a number of years. She is currently the director of the Office of Responsible Research Practices. Prior to that, she was the administrative director of the CCTS. In fact, it was Kim who hired me to put on programs such as this. So if it's turned out to be a bad day, you can blame her. <laughs> Conversely, if you enjoy the program, you can thank me afterward. Uh, but seriously, I know from experience that Kim is very expert at managing projects, and especially managing projects in the con context of teams. So I give you Kim to some. And very good. Oh, so here's your clicker. Even though I use project management every day in my uh, work and my career, I felt like I needed more tools. And um, the tool that I was looking for was to become a Lean Six Sigma black belt. And so I went back and got a master's in business operational excellence. And that is my new passion. So um, today we're not going to talk about that. But if anybody ever wants to talk about that, I'll talk about that forever. So learning objectives for today, uh, I want to come up with what, or uh, communicate what my um, definition is of project management via Wikipedia. Understand the processes in the project management life cycle, the knowledge focus areas, how you can apply those to your research. Um, be able to share a little bit of the toolkits that are available to you to, um, to move forward with your projects and where you can go for additional education. How many people in here have um, done a home renovation project? Painted a kitchen or, or landscaped a yard? Those are all projects. And the tools that you used and how you managed that project is really no different than what you're doing today in your lab or for your research project. They may be a little bit smaller. You might have had a little bit of help, but they're exactly the same. So what, if, you if you did a project like that, um, what was your favorite part? Somebody who has done a renovation, a home renovation project, or a painting project, what was your favorite part of that project? Planning. Planning. For me, it's getting it done. Anybody else? Have, what was the most challenging part? Problem solving. Finding a contractor or someone to do the work for you. A buddy if you provide the beer. Anything else that was particularly challenging? How to get started? What happens when things don't go like they're supposed to go? Well, project management is the discipline of organizing and managing your resources in such a way that those resources deliver the completed project within defined scope, time, and cost. Um, has anyone ever heard of the triple constraints of project management? I can tell I have an educated project management crowd here today, knows all the terminology. Defi the scope and the time and the cost are the three primary constraints to a project. So if you change one, you're going to be changing at least one, if not both of the others. If you change the time, you're changing the cost. If you change the cost, you're changing the time, perhaps the scope. Um, a lot of times in projects, you, the scope um, starts to expand. You get scope creep a lot. 
If you do that, you're probably changing both the time and the cost. It's just an important thing to remember in the back of your mind. If you make a change, know what the consequences are gonna be. So the project management life cycle has five basic processes. You initiate the project, you plan, execute, monitor and control and close. Really monitoring and control are going on the entire time. These are the 10 knowledge areas for project management. And if you can think about those five processes with these 10 knowledge areas, you really have a giant matrix because a lot of these are crossing over into each one of those processes. So let's think back to um, painting your kitchen and think about um, integration. What would you, if you were going to approach integration of this project and all these different parts, what would you say about painting your kitchen? Bringing all these pieces together. How many people write a to-do list? Talk to friends and neighbors, colleagues, about how did they paint their kitchen? Look online, look on the internet. What are all the things I have to think of? So you integrate all the parts. We mentioned scope. Scope is, are, is the goals and deliverables of the project. So think about painting that kitchen. Who can give me an example of project um, scope creep? So if you are doing your project and you're in the middle of it, give me an example of how that would not work. Sheepman. Exactly. Ooh, now my cabinets look really bad. Now I've got to paint them, yes, or the ceiling, or the hallway. Time. Think about you know, the, the time element for painting your kitchen. Um, you've got a family. Are you going to schedule painting your kitchen during dinner time? Do you have to be thinking about how long it's going to take to paint your kitchen? Is it going to be a weekend? Is it going to be a weekday? Cost. What's your budget? Do you have enough to hire somebody? Do you have to paint your own kitchen? Are you going to bring friends over? If you bring friends over, do you have to buy them pizza? Quality. What kind of paint do you get? What kind of paint brushes? What about the quality of the people that are doing the painting, including yourself? These are all things that you have to think about for your research project as well. <laughs> Human resources, again, are you doing it on your own? Are you doing it with somebody? Communications. You go home after work, you start painting, your spouse comes in and says, wait a minute, I have to make cookies for the soccer team for their game tonight. You know, you've got to communicate with people about this project that you've got. Risk management. You think in advance of what might go wrong. So what might be, go wrong with painting your kitchen? Paint on the floor. You're gonna spill paint. Something else, anything else? You got the wrong color, or the color just doesn't look like what you expected it to look like. Anything else on what could go wrong? One, one uh, coat of paint doesn't cover it. There's your theory of constraints. You're gonna to have to go buy more paint. It's gonna cost more, it's gonna take you longer. Purchasing your supplies or hiring your contractor and stakeholders, talking to everybody that's going to be impacted by this project, by painting this kitchen. I've been there, <laughs> this is true. So going back to the five processes, the first step is project initiation. Um, how many people have ever uh, written a grant proposal before? Yeah, this is a, a great way to think about the project. You know, what's the goal? What's the benefit? Who's the customer? What does success even look like? A painted kitchen? A well-painted kitchen, a painted kitchen by tonight. What is success? 
identify any risk moving forward and defining the scope. This is all part of just thinking about initiating the project. The, the, as we go through these processes, I'm going to introduce some tools to you that can help you fr frame um, what the, um, you know, the goal here is for that project, for that step in the process. So this is a project charter. How many people have ever completed a project charter before? Anyone? Yeah. Um, the, the project charter is a way to get all of the scope and the plan onto a piece of paper that all of the stakeholders can th then share. Um, you know, you can see the, there's standard questions on here about the project name and the location, but there's also what is the description? What is the problem statement? What is the business case? And this particular example is on the CCTS website. This is not about painting your kitchen. This is about identifying a genetic marker and developing an assay for a disease. So you can use the projects, the research projects that you're working on to start here with this project charter. The project charter is a living document. It's a working document. You start making some assumptions. You identify what your risks are. And you, as you go through your project, you're going to change. It's never going to turn out the way you think it's going to. There's always going to be bumps in the road or unusual results or things don't get done on time. So back to the cycle again. Next is the project plan. Um, the stakeholders and project manager, you've identified those people in the project charter. The scope you've identified. And so I wasn't here for this morning, but I under, as I understand it, you went over some scheduling issues and time management with Lisa. Is that right? So you bring that all into your project plan. Staffing, sounds like you had that this morning as well. Budget, did you have budgets this morning or sometime today? So you're bringing that in. A quality plan, I didn't see any speakers about quality on the agenda. Did, you, did anybody talk about quality today yet? OK. Communications plan, I was here for a little bit of Lisa. And a data management plan. Did you have anyone talking about data management plans? OK, so here's an example of another tool that you can use for scheduling. How many people have ever used a Gantt chart before? Yeah, it's pretty standard. Um, people can use this in different ways. Sometimes it's the big buckets, the big milestones in your project. Some people like to come up with every um, small step that you're going to accomplish. It's just personal style. But you can see that it has your aims. It has who's responsible for accomplishing those aims, what the task is, and then what the timeline is for accomplishing that. What's the work timeline and what's the milestone for when it's going to be done. This is a total uh, uh, work breakdown structure where you take that project, that lab project, and you break down every step. So then you can correlate it to money and you can correlate it to time. You have to choose what tools work for you. Some people might like to use this. Some people prefer the Gantt chart. A communications plan example. Um, I don't know if Lisa, I think it was Lisa, went over any of the communications plans. But it's very simplistic, very straightforward. How often are you going to have meetings? How often do you need to submit reports? Who's responsible for collecting that information? Who's responsible for sending it? Who's it going to? Sometimes in your grant applications, these are the kinds of things that is helpful to put in for reviewers. The data management plan, I don't really have an example up here. Um, this is a website that the university libraries have. And they have a tool there that's pretty good. So back again to our project management life cycle. We now have a project initiated. We are now complete the planning cycle. Now we're into execution. The first part of execution is to have your project kickoff meeting. So whenever you start a project, you should mark that. That is you know, day one. 
you have a kickoff meeting with all the stakeholders, with the lab team, everyone involved, and um, get everybody on the same page and get it started. I think you're gonna have leadership and management style next. And for team development, I think you had Larry and Phil that talked about mentoring and team member effectiveness. You're pulling all of that in to how you're managing your team for your project. Then you're back to the project management life cycle. The next component in the process is monitoring and control. So you have to identify what your risk assessments are. Again, projects don't go like they planned, kind of like budgets don't go like you plan. They're just plans. It's the roadmap. But you're going to take uh, diversions on that roadmap. There's going to be bumps in that road. Um, so think about what the risk assessments might be. Um, conduct your review meetings. Talk to your lab staff. Uh, talk to people in the next lab. Um, discuss the risk, the schedule, the budget, the staff, the scope. Um, come up with a way. Uh, we talked a lot about communication and conflict and um, team effectiveness, but what are you going to do when that communication cycle is completed? What are you going to do about authorizing any changes? Who makes that decision? Who is the decision maker? So here's an example of a risk assessment and mitigation plan. So again, back to the example for the biomarker. High risk, the biomarker is not discovered. What are you going to do about that? What's the probability of occurrence? The cell lines become contaminated. What do you do next and who does it? You have your personnel turnover, which I think Tanya brought up this morning. What's your backup plan for that? How do you deal with that? If you think about these things in advance, it's easier to plan for them. Unable to recruit study participants. Are most of the people in here lab versus clinical research, I think? So maybe you're not as concerned about that. If you were concerned about study participants, here's an example of a quality analysis tool. And you could use this for the, the uh, specimens that you have in your lab or whatever lab techniques you're using. So in this case, the example is that the study participants, um, you're bringing them in, you're completing screening, but they're not enrolling in the study Y. And so basically, you're just doing a Pareto chart. You're looking at all the different reasons. Um, and then you can make some decisions about whether your recruitment strategies are correct, whether your eligibility criteria is on target, or whether you need to go get some help from somebody for using some additional recruitment strategies. Somebody give me an example of how you might use this in the lab. Quality, a quality um, issue. Yeah, Phil. Pareto. Yeah, Pareto chart. Um, it just really shows you the. It's the the chart on the upper quadrant where it's showing you the the bar graph and the trends. It's just a way to um, kind of display the data. So how would you use this in a lab? What, what would you do if your samples were not, they were contaminated or something, and you did not know the source of the contamination? How would you, how would you use this, or how would you test for quality? And do you plan for that in advance? Look at your reagents, yeah. What else could you do? I'm not a lab person, I'm a clinical research person, so I really, there's no right answer here, I won't know. What would you do? If you were looking, if you had a quality issue in the lab? Um, yeah, I mean, I would just start comparing Well, I, you know, I would try to find out what, what the quality issue was. I mean, is it the same quality issue? Is it, is it 
Maybe us. like comparing lab techs. You know, maybe there's something yeah. that somebody is doing that right. are they're different. Well, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I would try to determine if the if the problem is the same with all respect. If they're all suffering from the same problem, or if there's a bunch of different problems. Mm -hmm. and, and, Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe that's where this chart could be effective, you know, where you just see if it's all the same thing or if it's different things. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, just like she said, I would, I would you know, look at everyone, how techs are doing things, and, um, you know, if there's a difference in quality across, across lots and batches and yeah. stuff like that. Of course, I'm assuming that there are quality issues in the lab. Maybe there isn't any, and you don't have to worry about this. To close up the life cycle of a project, um, you might think, okay, uh, we did our planning, we did our execution, project's a success, uh, we did our monitoring and control during the project, but you're not done yet. You have to close that project. And sometimes project closeout, if, if you're a one and done, if you're a graduate student working on your PhD and you're not looking for a career in research and you're a one and done, Okay, maybe project closeout isn't as important. But for those of you who are, are pursuing research careers, identifying lessons learned is one of the most valuable results of, a, of completing a project and doing closeout. Where the requirements met, especially for the customer. Your customer might be your sponsor. Did you meet those deliverables? Were they on time? Were you within budget? You close your budget and then you release your project team to other organizational needs, which might be your next project or somebody else's project. This is an example of a project closeout checklist. Um, the College of Medicine has a checklist uh, link, I think, to the Office of Sponsored Programs that's pretty good if you're doing sponsored research. So here are some project management tracking tools. Now you've seen a little bit about what the process is, pretty straightforward and basic. You know what the knowledge areas are. Um, what do you do with that? Well, here are some tools in addition to those in your toolkit that you can use for tracking the project. There's a lot of informatic solutions. Um, these are a couple of them. Uh, Microsoft Project Manager, there's links and descriptions of some on the CCTS website. Um, Team Gantt just came out, or I just learned about it. I haven't uh, explored that one yet. Um, Morstein.com, which is run by Fisher College of Business and offers a course on the fundamentals of project management. This is the wall from my office. So I use Post-its for my project management tracking. And the tracking that I do, each one of those post-its is a project that one of my staff is working on. So these are office projects. I'm, you know, most of the projects that I do are the Lean Six Sigma continuous process improvement, but you know, we have 33 people in our office and there's a lot of projects going on at all times. So this is the preferred method that I have. It's just whatever works for you. Some people like technology and I do too. But I just like a visual, I'm a visual management person. Does anybody have any tracking tools that they've used that they like that they want to share? Yeah. Uh, Trello. Trello. Got to vote for Trello. Yeah, a couple people have told me that they really like Trello. Yeah. Read the oh, I don't know that one. You want to describe that a little bit? Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I'll have to look that one up. Any other project management tools? How many other people like the post-it note system? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Here are some additional resources and references. Um, the CCTS project or, uh, website has a lot of project direction and guidance, toolkits, ex all of these tools that I've shared with you. There's examples, there's templates, 
Um, you can use those to discover you know, how you, what fits for you and what you might want to use. Um, fundamentals of project management through Fisher College of Business and more STEAM. Has anybody taken that online course? Helen, you have? What, do you, what did you think? Yeah, I think it's about 15 hours. Yeah, it's not a real long course. You don't have to enroll as a student. You can get templates from it at the end of the day. Um, it's, it's fairly um, robust. It's, you know, it's a, it's a good instruction. They have, it's not expensive. It's not your normal Fisher College of Business offering. It's very reasonable, especially if you're within the university. So we just had 25 people in our office take this all at the same time so that we all had the same basic understanding of the knowledge areas and the language that, and the tools we were going to start using. Um, I have some handouts on that if anybody is interested in knowing more about what their course outline would look like. And we can send that to you, I think, when they send out the evaluations. And then this is my contact information if anybody ever wants to talk about Lean Six Sigma um, or project management questions. So I'll stop here and ask if anybody has any questions or comments. Are they getting the slides? You can challenge me on something more than that. <laughs> OK, good. What other kind of, do you ha anybody want to share a challenge that they've had in the lab with project management? A lot of it is the content that you've already had today. It's just pulling it all together in a monitoring way, a tracking way, and integrate it. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the hard things for me is um, defining the scope and cutting it off somewhere and making it specific. You know, and just drawing a line. It's the most challenging for everyone, especially as a scientist. You think, oh, I want to now go look at this. Yeah. You know, or this looks promising. Let's let's go just go down this road, and yeah, you got to watch that scope creep because there goes your time and your cost. Anything else on challenges that you've had in the lab, project management that's not directly related to something you already had? <laughs> I think that the research studies that you have are so diverse, it's really hard to identify one track that works for everybody. And people are very different. So it's hard to say. If you go to the CCTS website, like I say, these tools all have a research example. So you can see how it applies to something other than painting your kitchen. Anything else? You're all going to be great project managers, I know, and everything, all your projects are going to come in under budget, ahead of schedule, mission accomplished. Thank you.